Hi, I'm Jared Fossum. Welcome to another episode of UEM PD TV, where we are at Linden Elementary in the garage. And we're here with Angel Holmes, who is the garage superintendent. I don't know, what do you go by? Uh, Mrs. Holmes. Mrs. Holmes. So we're here with Mrs. Holmes. So why don't you tell us about the garage, like what you have here, what it is. Okay, we actually are in a portable in the front of the school. Um, and when we created this space, we wanted to have a space that didn't feel like the classroom, um, which is why it's not called a lab, it's not called the STEM place or a maker space, it is the garage. Um, because I wanted kids to feel like they can come out here and make a mess and that we're building something. Um, and that, and I totally envision that this is like garage startup land. Like these kids, the ideas that they are creating here is could be a possible startup company for them. So um, it's, it's a very unique place. Um, it makes for really unique conversations at the dinner table. Hey mom, I had spelling today, math and garage. Um, but it's kind of getting out that it's this space that doesn't feel like school because you're building and creating what you want to create. Oh wow, that, that sounds like a place that every kid would want to be. So what are the kids learning while they're in the garage? What are they doing? For the first part of the year, I was introducing them into different mediums that the kids were wanting to learn. Because um, right now, kids are really kind of bored with Google Docs and just giving it in front of the classroom presentation. They more want to make videos, and they want to 3D print, and they want to make a robot. That's how they want to present what they're learning. So the first part of the year, I let um, I integrated the core curriculum and taught them um, these different things like robotics and web development and um, they kind of got a taste for each course and then at Christmas they decided which one of these mediums they liked best and now they're all enrolled in a um, online tech trip course it's done through Canvas of that course so now as they come out we have six different classes going on we have robotics sound and audio mixing web development, programming, um, animation and drawing. What am I forgetting? 3D printing. Um, and they're working on um, learning now more in depth with that course. Wow, that's, that's a lot of options for kids to have. I think yeah. that's fantastic. So they, they pick one of these mm -hmm. technologies to use. Mm -hmm. what, are, what, are they, what are they doing with it? So we kind of found that the courses were kind of boring for kids, so we married it with the idea of passion projects. So um, the kids have been doing passion-based research, something that they want to learn, everything from basketball to leaf molecules to Pokemon, um, something that they're passionate about and they're learning a lot about. And now they're using their Tech Trap course to create a project to show what it is they've learned with their passion. So they come in here, do they do the research here, or are they doing the technology piece? So what's really nice about this space is the teachers come with their kids, so they're learning these technologies side by side with their kids. Um, one thing that they did learn how to do was how to do passion-based research. So when they came out here, um, I trained them all how to train their kids on how to do passion-based research, so then they were able to do that in their classroom. So their classrooms, they've been using the technology in their classrooms, their Chromebooks, to do that research. And then when they come out here to the garage where there's all of the available equipment, the printers, the robots, um, they're ready to go with their, with their passion. So it really has been a collaborative effort with the homeroom teachers adapting what goes on here into their classrooms. So it's kind of seamless. So what are some of the benefits that you see um, for students coming out here to the garage? I think my favorite is that it doesn't matter what you're good at. You're good at something here in the garage. Everybody's on the same playing field. It doesn't matter if you just failed your math test. Um, you come out here and you can excel. Um, and it doesn't matter if you just aced your math test. You could come out here and totally struggle. Um, it's, it's really fun to see kids just take their own passion and be able to share it with their whole class um, and to see different kids that you wouldn't think excel just take off um, and my favorite is how much failure <laughs> how much failure they have 
but they are okay with it because they're doing what they love. And so they're okay trying again, trying again, being like, it failed. I love this that I'm trying to do, so I'm going to be willing to do it again. Well, and that's one of the unique things that I think that you have here is the term failure has such a negative context to it, you know, even in education, and we're trying to learn, and learning is about not getting it right every single time, and, that, and that's what you have here. Yeah, and I love that it's set up too in such a way that they're learning from each other's failures. So even if somebody's not enrolled in the 3D printing course, since they're sharing a space with those that are, they see their failures as well and can learn from them. I mean, it's to have six different classes going on in one classroom is hectic, but I think it's good because they're able to see failure at different levels and it's okay to see failure at different levels because it, it, it doesn't reflect on them because they're all doing different stuff anyway. They're all working on something different anyway, and so it's not like, oh, you're at this point and I'm at this point, I'm better than you. It's all, we're all working together and we're all at different points anyway because we're doing a different project. My name is Kirsten and I'm doing basketball and sculpting and drawing. My name is Sam and I'm doing sculpting and drawing and I'm also dr trying, my, I'm trying to draw like a man running with phases of him behind him. We like going on to drawing in our, with our passion-based project. And we also just kind of like, if we have some free time, we also can just mess around and see and experiment what we can do with it. And we also have all these other fun projects that we can do. My name is Caleb and the project I am working on is 3D printing a marshmallow head guy. Uh, my name is Jocelyn and I am in art and I am in and I'm using ske sketchbook and I'm right now working on tracing. My favorite thing is that um, we can like um, work with each other and help each other. Hi, I'm Dolly and I'm working on sketchbook drawing and I'm working on Disney and on Disney I'm just gonna I'm learning how to draw Disney characters and how Walt Disney like kind of drew things. I don't know, it's just like fun out here and it's interesting. Like I've never experienced something like this and it's really fun for me. to. So like Mrs. Holmes is a really good garage teacher for me. I feel like she's really nice. All the cool things in the garage are also really fun too. So why don't you take us through um, a scenario with a class coming in and how you'd get it started through the whole time that you have them. Okay, there are a few things I have in place that I've kind of learned through trial and error. Um, Early on in doing passion projects, I learned it's really hard to keep kids on task um, and making sure that they're being productive with the time that you give them. So I know one method that was out there was having them fill out a form, tell me on this worksheet what it is you were able to complete. And I didn't like that because I found suddenly their passion project became filling out this worksheet project. It took the passion out of their project. Um, and so I started researching what do other companies do to make sure that their employees are on task um, and doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I came across what's called the Agile Methodology um, and um, it's great for collaboration, um, which is something I'm trying to teach our kids anyway. Um, and what, the, what it involves is the kids being in what's called scrum teams. Now a scrum team is anywhere between four to eight kids. So these guys have about six. So when they first come in, they sit down. If I have any announcements, I give the announcements, but then they go do what is called a stand-up meeting. So their scrum team stands around in a circle and they have a scrum board and they go around the circle saying what it is they've accomplished and what they hope to be able to accomplish. And that is kind of what has taken place of filling out worksheets. It's just, and, I, and it's called a stand-up meeting because it shouldn't take longer than five minutes. If they sit down, it will take longer. Wow. Well, you've done some really wonderful things here. I, I think it's a perfect example of the four C's and, and just what a really neat way of, of having the whole school get on board, learn technology, but use it effectively and give kids the choice and the personalization that they can have to have their own project. Yeah. Fantastic Thank job. <laughs> Thank you. So all of this would just be kind of a vision without the help of an administrator and, and really getting their buy-in, especially involving the whole school like you have here. So let's talk to your administrator and see what she has to say. All right, well, I'm here with Kate Ross, who's the 
principal here at Linden Elementary, and she's really the founder of the garage. So why don't you tell us how you got it started? Well, we've been on a journey here at Linden Elementary. Um, this is my eighth year as the principal here. And when I came, we had one computer lab and we had um, maybe like five projectors and a document camera that you could check out from the library. So this has been, um, if you would have told me eight years ago that we would be here, I probably would have laughed. You know, so we, I, we have been working on this in a lot of different ways. And even last year at this time, the garage was a baby idea. Like it was not fully developed, it was not fully formed, and um, it's just been kind of a miracle. So we've been acquiring technology, building capacity in our teachers. We've been, you know, really trying to help our, our teachers use technology in a way that was not just an electronic piece of paper over the years. Getting everybody on board, how, how hard was that? You know, we didn't know how this year was going to go, you know, because here we are cutting into teachers' teaching time, if you will, and, um, and also requiring that the teachers come too, that this wasn't a prep time, that this was a teaching time. But I will tell you, from the very first day that they started coming out here, they have rolled up their sleeves and they have been excited. But, but again, they've kind of been watching on the sidelines the last couple of years anyway. Like, we want a piece of that. We want to do that. But there is that hesitancy amongst teachers when it's like, ah, oh, technology is scary, or I don't know how I would do that. So to be handheld literally through the process and build their own capacity while they're out here watching their students learn, I, it, it's been a beautiful thing. It's, it's really gone so well. So with all that goes on out in the garage, how has the uh, community and the parents felt about it? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, first of all, it allows for parent involvement in ways that we had never dreamed of before. I mean, we've got parents that have expertise in these areas that are coming in as industry professionals, you know, providing some perspective, some motivation, some assistance when it comes to um, what these students are trying to create and leveraging parent resources in that way is so awesome. I mean, we, like I said, we're just going places we, we've never gone before. Also, our school community council has been incredibly supportive. Um, and so, I mean, those are parents. And um, the buzz is good, and every child will have an opportunity to create and to be really great at something that matters to them. You know, like, that's, that's what every parent wants. Thanks for joining us for another episode of UEN PDTV. If you'd like to see more episodes, go to uen.org slash PDTV. And if you'd like to sign up for one of our free classes, and we do have classes about passion projects or Genius Hour, you can go to uen.org slash development. And we'll see you next time in class.